right, you know what? It's always a struggle. I'm glad I asked. All right, everybody, come on in. Let me know if we're better now. For anybody new here, hi, I am Maggie, your substitute teacher. I'd like to welcome you to yet another, you know what, this is not a struggle cooking class. This is actually a dining documentary and I am very excited. Thank you so much, my dear. All right, so you all may know me as uh, Maggie, the substitute teacher. I love cooking for you. I post every day and I'm your substitute teacher because I cook with sugar-free, dairy-free and gluten-free ingredients. So my recipes are, sugar substitutes, dairy substitutes, and gluten substitutes, unless I'm on vacation where I will eat what they eat, hashtag research. So we have been doing a series this week to recap everybody from the Maggie, the first annual Maggie Meetup Cruise. We are actively planning number two. So save the dates for November of 2024. Um, I am very excited. Lauren has picked out some uh, something adult for us. All right, so you all have been joining me and we have been re recapping them day by day, but this is a part two of day two. So my second night on the cruise, I actually went to a restaurant or a dining experience called the Chef's Table. And the Chef's Table is a seven course tasting menu and it was probably the best dining experience of my life and so i want to share that with you all so we'll take attendance see who we have here and then we're going to get right into it i think we already did attendance on TikTok. hello everybody thank you so much for being here on instagram we've got courier and we have uh dre energy thank you so much for being here uh over here who do we have we've got killis now saying it's good and we got I was thinking about you. Tara's here. She says, good evening. She is so excited for this review. She is here for the around the world dessert. All right, everybody. So if you're new here, what we usually do on a doc dining documentary, and I will do that today, dining documentaries, because I cook every day for y'all when I'm not home, clearly I'm eating. But what I like to do for you all is give you a review of the meals that I am eating. The first part, we go through the actual menu so you all can see a little bit about the restaurant the options i tell you all what i ordered i'd love to know what you all would have on the menu and then the second half i'm actually going to pull up that's what i need to pull up my pictures and video we'll get to that in a second i'll pull up my pictures and video so you all can actually see what i had it was exquisite okay so just a little uh housekeeping so when you go on a cruise there are dining services that are included in your cruise price and they are very good there's basically food around the clock if you like the grab and go stuff for the kids pizzas and hot dogs they also have the dining service in the banquet hall style uh buffets they have a lot of that however if you want a more premium experience which i do thanks to you all for helping my channel to grow hello uh body whisper good to see you hello Mo Jolly. If you want a more premium experience when you cruise, you do have the option to, to book certain specialty dining. Now, how do you do that? As soon as you put a deposit down for the, for the cruise, you're booked. And it could be anywhere from like $100, $200, $400, depending on the price of your cruise. Every cruise line is different. But what we did with Lauren, our travel agent this time, when she got the block of rooms for us and we paid our deposit, we got an email back from Royal Caribbean with our room number, our confirmation number, and they have an app where you can basically do everything from home before you even set sail. And I would highly recommend, whether y'all are cruising with me next year or any other cruise, especially for the specialty dining experiences, you will see the chef's table, maybe like 18 people there, and the cruise ship had like 5,000 people. So some of these very uh, premium experiences will sell out if you wait until you're actually on the ship, okay? So let's pull up the Royal Caribbean website. We we will take a look at our ship we will take a look at the dining experiences and then we'll do a deep dive in, deep dive into the chef's table all right everyone i hope you all are doing well happy wednesday i'm so glad that you all are here all right and i 
will drop all the links in the chat in case anybody wants to look this stuff up on your own. I love giving you all all of the information. All right, so when you go to Royal Caribbean's website, there's a lot going on. Um, what I will say about Royal Caribbean, and hopefully by the time we are finished with this series, and if you all like this uh, series, um, this is only day two and it was a five day cruise. So if you all want me to continue more after this, put more in the chat. Hello. Hello, Johnny. Um, you can put more in the chat and I'll keep going. I just don't want to overwhelm you all with <laughs> all of the snacks. Hello, Abena. Thank you so much for being here. Royal Caribbean, um, I've sailed on it three times, is a really great all around cruise line. If you're a foodie like I am, they have really good dining experiences. If you're an adventurer like E. Capone, he wanted to do the rock climbing. They've got rock climbing, they got ice skating, they've got surfing, they have all of that stuff. If you really like the, the zip lining, y'all have seen all of that. Hey, Johnny, long time. I know I've been here, y'all. I just need to get back on TikTok. I'm still here every day. Um, if you like Lauren, like more of a slow paced, relaxed kind of cruise, they have adult only areas. They have very relaxing areas. So you can absolutely make it your own. But since I'm here for y'all for research purposes, I want to show you all of the food. Tara says more and Killis says more. Okay, so we'll keep going y'all until we get it done. All right, so let's go back to the screen share. All right, so you all can see here, this is the Royal Caribbean website. So I'm just going to scroll. I'm going to stay here on ships. Let me just scroll down really quick and see. Those of you all on TikTok and Instagram, I am sharing my screen. So if you want, you can always find me on YouTube. But you can see some of the Royal Caribbean ships have water parks. They have like these infinity pools, which basically look like it's connected to the ocean. You can see this is glass here. They have water shows. I did that on night four. So you all will see the water show uh, since you want more. And then they have small rooms they have balcony rooms like i had and then they have suites so if you're traveling with a family or group there's something for everyone lots of de destinations you all can review this on your own we did a four night caribbean cruise uh the ship that we were on was the allure of the seas but you can see they have some new ones coming next year the icon of the seas the utopia of the seas it is literally like a floating las vegas and they have technology on these ships that keep them stable so you don't even really know that you're moving you look outside you see water and then you wake up in the next morning you look outside and you see land you didn't like feel anything turning or moving or whatnot all kind of specials. If you live by the coast, there's all kinds of options for you all to sail. This uh, cruise we left out of Port Canaveral, which is close to Orlando. So y'all know I'm in Atlanta, flew 45 minutes an hour to Orlando, and then Lauren got us a shuttle bus to take us to the port. But you can sail from Florida, from Texas, from I don't know where is Cape Liberty. Is that New York or the West Coast? When I used to live in Virginia, y'all, there were even cruises from like was it Newport News or Virginia Beach? So if you live close to water, you may have a cruise port close to you. We're going to get to the, excuse me, we're going to get to the Coco Cay Day uh, coming up, but Royal Caribbean has their own private beach. All of the cruise lines have their own private beach, and I will do that. I think that's day four. Uh, so you all will see that since you want more. Um, and then you can look at all the different destinations. I've been on an Alaskan cruise. I've been on multiple Caribbean cruise, Bahamas cruises. Um, I would love to do the world or the transatlantic cruise, but um, haven't done that yet. And then of course about the ship. So I've dropped the link, you all can check it all out. So we were on the allure of the sea. So I'm gonna come up here to the top and I'm gonna click on ships going to find our ship. Now I am doing this on the Royal Caribbean website so you all can do the same. However, when you book and you have a reservation and it can be like a year out because you can pay on it whatever works for you you have access to all of this in your app and it's customized to you so who is traveling uh the type of stateroom that you have you basically have your own like little mini calendar in the royal caribbean app so you can see their whole fleet here and i don't know if this goes from older to younger i mean sorry older to newer but you all can just see all the different categories here. It looks like 20 something different ships. So different ships offer different services. 
different ships are bigger or smaller. If you like the ships that can do everything, like um, like Lauren recommended the Oasis class, which are these big ones, then you can have all of the activities. Some people like something a little bit more slower paced and the smaller ships can go into different ports. Like for example, if you wanna go to Alaska or if you wanna go to the Mediterranean, some of the ports can't take the big mega ships. So all of this to consider when you all are looking at cruise Hello, Sa. Thank you so much for being here. And here is Flo. Ah, uh, Millicent is from Virginia. Hello, shout out to Warner Robbins. Um, uh, Millicent has a question. How can you get you uh, finish that for me? I'm not sure what you're asking. So Killa says, Maggie's booking agent to help you with your bookings and we'll answer your questions. Yes. Yeah, so we'll see Lauren. If not today, she'll definitely be back tomorrow. Christina says, hi, Maggie. Christina's close to Norfolk or you, you're aware of Norfolk. But yes, I mean, Lauren is here in the Atlanta area. She is a proper travel agent. She does everything from trips to all inclusive to cruises. And she's a scholar, just like y'all. I'm the substitute teacher. Y'all are my scholars. And she asked one day, she's like, Maggie, have you ever thought about doing a meetup on a cruise? And I said, set it up and I'm there. <laughs> y'all already got a lot going on. I stream every day, so I don't really want to plan a meetup. And Lauren put all the details together. She got us the ship. She got us the room rate. She got us the discount. She got us the transportation, like the round trip uh, airport transfers, uh, tra uh, travel insurance. She made it seamless. So Lauren is setting up our cruise for next year as well. Hello, uh, CMH Wilson. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Asking. Hello, skinny uh hello here is um here is flow thank you all so much for being here on instagram i appreciate it excuse me okay so let's continue all right yes y'all enjoyed it absolutely okay all right so let's go back and let's find our ship so I was on the allure of the seas. Why did I pick it? I didn't. Lauren picked it and I loved it. So let's take a look at the allure of the seas and I'll put the link in the chat. So if you all want to check out this ship for your own uh, information, you absolutely can. You can browse this at any time. All right. So this is the ship that I was on all of last week. You all see the two. Okay. You all see the two like surfing pools. Um, the suites are here. This is the aqua theater. Uh, Y'all will see that on day four, but there was something for everyone. You know what? I'm going to actually play the video so you all can, um, can see a little bit about it. Let me just do this and give it some sound. So you all can see that. Let me go back. So you all see a little bit of that. And the lure of the seas looks like, let me go back. Looks like they sail out of Texas as well. Millicent says, how can you get in touch with me? Maggie, the substitute teacher at gmail.com. You can also find me on Instagram and uh, Facebook and I guess even TikTok. Uh, there's an inbox feature there. Maggie, the substitute teacher is my handle everywhere. Y'all know I'm all about food and femininity. I got classes and coaching and all of that. We're doing a dining documentary today, but I still love helping feminine women attract and keep the masculine man of their dreams. Hello, Renaissance. Thank you for being here and hello, Rio. Thank you so much for being here. Okay, so let's do a quick scroll and then we will take a look at the dining because that's why y'all are here. So there's the ship. We looked at the video. So you all can see here, they have something for everyone. Uh, lots of awards, um, some of the destinations. Um, they do have, of course, the swimming pools, the saunas, and then the aqua theater. They have rock climbing. We're gonna look at the dining. They have entertainment. All of this is included, the rock climbing, the entertainment, and a lot of food is included. If you want the premium food, you just need to book that extra. And the way it works, let me make sure I explain the pricing for you all. So you can sail out of uh, Florida. Oh, let me make sure, am I? Let me bring you guys back in. 
here I am. Okay, um, you can sail out of Florida, um, or I think it goes to Texas. Um, and you can read more about it. Stuff to know before you go. Ah, you can even do a virtual tour. I went to Dazzles. I think that was, I can't remember what night that was, but I went to see live music. So you all will see that coming up. Um, I'll show you my pictures and then all the reviews. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how the specialty dining works. So on cruises, there are so much like options for dining and food. If you want to do any of the specialty restaurants, they, uh, they operate with like a cover charge. So depending on the restaurant, how fancy it is, it can be like $20 or it could be like $70. I'm making it up. But you would pay like a little premium so that you can have a different menu, uh, more personalized service in a small intimate environment. But once you pay that cover charge, you can have anything on the menu as much of it. You can even do that in the included food. So just so you all know, when you're cruising, if you go to the main dining restaurant and they have the menu on the table when you sit down, but if you can't decide between two appetizers or two entrees or whatnot, they'll tell you get both. And I kind of got two of everything because y'all know I'm greedy, hashtag research. Um, but yes, the, the, the cruise dining, um, one good thing about it is that the portions are a little bit smaller. It's not the super size plates that we're used to. So it really allows you to taste everything. Yes, y'all can find me on Linktree if you want to get in touch with me as well. All right, let us continue. So let us go to... This is where you would go. You can either do the app or you could come here to manage my cruise once you have a booking, all right? So let's see, let's go to Allure of the Seas, cruise ships, cruise dining. All right. So lots of options here. Um, we can take a look at the top uh, culinary spots if you all want to. Each ship has some that are um, the same and then some that are unique but they always have lots of options you can see here this is a local fresh they have like grab and go latin flavors uh, we're going to dive into the specialty dining uh, this is what i love this is included casual dining room service we talked about this yesterday if you want to stay in your room on your private balcony you can absolutely order room service if you get continental like breakfast, it's included. If you want any hot food uh, cooked to order, it's like a $9 cover charge, but you can get as much as you want. Um, of course, lots of bars and lounges, but y'all know I am not, um, I am not a like a big drinker, so I didn't do that. Um, they also have packages. If y'all want me to explain that, I will, but let's get in here. So yesterday we talked about Giovanni, so you all saw the Italian kitchen. So let me see if I can find the chef's table. I'm just scrolling so you all can see some of the options here. Did I miss it? Okay, let me scroll down. All right, so you can see here, all included, this is all the food that comes with your uh, cruise fare. So there is a lot. I just wanted to do the premium for you all. <laughs> don't tell, don't lie, Maggie. You wanted to do it for you too. Okay, so we're gonna come down here to the specialty dining and we're gonna click on chef's table. That's okay. I am on YouTube. If those of y'all on TikTok or Instagram wanna see my screen share, Maggie the Substitute Teacher on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or Twitter, you can see the full thing. Hello, Vertiferk. Ver Thank you so much for being here. You're never late. Okay, so let's read a little bit about it. How's everybody doing? Yeah, Christina, we talked about Giovanni's yesterday. I thought about you. Gillis is laughing. All right, everyone. So let us read a little bit about the chef's table. So you can see here the price fix or the prefix or however you say that, somebody help me. But that means you're going to pay for this meal, but it is, honestly, I don't remember how much it is, but let's just say, you know what? Let me stop. And you all tell me after all seven courses, how much you feel like this is worth. All right, Dr. JK, thank you so much for being here, Katrinda. Y'all make sure you've got Katrinda's book. She's watching on Instagram, my morning musings, Amazon bestseller. We just did a collab. Hello, Ebony. Y'all make sure you get this book on Amazon, okay? I wanna make sure you all support. So the chef's table, what does it say? As VIP and intimate as can be. Welcome to Chef's Table, the most exclusive and 
elevated dining experience on our fleet. Join an intimate group of fellow foodies on a private Epicurean journey led by the ship's chef de cuisine. You'll sit down to a white tablecloth dinner, spotlighting five exquisite courses that range from scallop carpaccio with yuzu vinaigrette to grilled filet mignon served with truffle potato puree, each expertly paired with the perfect wine to highlight every flavor on the menu. Y'all, I'm just gonna take a moment and just have a breath. <sighs> yes, yes, yes. The Tara says, say less, I'm there. I know y'all. Look, this is not, this is not for the kids and this is not for the people that are just like, yeah, whatever, I'll just have a burger. Nothing wrong with that. But if you want the best dining experience that Royal Caribbean has to offer, the chef's table, I highly recommend it. Now, this is one that you definitely need to reserve in advance. You'll pay a little bit more. Would love to know how much you all think it's worth. So you see that it is five courses of food, but there's also like an aperitif uh, before the appetizer. So we had a welcome cocktail to kind of get the appetite going. And then there was dessert. Tara is here for dessert. So in total, it was seven different courses. So think of a seven course tasting menu. Uh, yes, Millicent, I'm on YouTube, Maggie, the substitute teacher.com. Seven course tasting menu. Now for this dining experience, you all, you need to block about three hours. So if you're one of those people, and I like to tell y'all, cause there's something for everybody. Hello, dermatology. Um, if you're one of those people, that's just like, I just want to, you know, eat quick and get back to the surfing. This is not for you. You need to dress up. You need to be patient. The chef is going to come out between each course and explain to you the ingredients, explain to you the preparation, explain to you where he sourced the scallops from, the lobster from, how he marinates the filet mignon. Y'all, I could cry right now. Likewise, the sommelier, which is the wine expert, works uh, in tandem with the chef. He has hand selected a wine that corresponds with each course. So the chef is going to come out explain to you the course. The sommelier is going to then come and say, and I've paired it with this wine. It has top notes of this and a hint of grapefruit and this and that. Take a bite of this, of course, swirl, sniff and sip, and then take a bite and then have a sip, experience the blah, blah, blah. Ugh, such a foodie. And then at the end, the pastry chef is going to come out and explain to you the inspiration behind the dessert and the ingredients. It is a full dining experience. I absolutely loved it. But if it seems like torture to you, if that's too long, too complicated, too much going on, do not go. Hello, I am Money. Hello, Christy. Hello, Talisa. Thank you all so much for being here. How are we feeling so, so far? Uh, Christina says, awesome. Y'all are liking it. Christina says, I'd love that. I want to know what's in everything. Absolutely. Okay, class, let's continue. So this is the most VIP experience. So the attire is formal. I have to say I was dressed okay. I should have been dressed better, but this was the same day as my tour. So I had a nice blouse on, but, um, and you all can see the pictures here, but it was fine. It was fine. You definitely want to dress up though. This is not a place where you would want to come straight from the pool and have your beach gear on. Okay. So just letting you all know, so you don't go there and embarrass yourself. All right. Everybody's doing well. Let's see what else they say here. Okay, so I'm going to read, I'm gonna take my time here. We're gonna read the menu highlights and then I'll go over to the menu, then I'll show you all my pictures, okay? Menu highlights. So it says available on select sailing. So this is one of the things when you all are looking for cruises, especially with Royal Caribbean, every cruise line has a version of this. So you'll wanna see what's available to you, but some of the newer cruise ships and the bigger cruise ships have this. Menu highlights. Start your meal with the scallop carpaccio, I believe that's how you say it, served with yuzu vinaigrette and crispy quinoa. Then transition to the smoked tomato soup sprinkled with garlic focaccia, shout out to the homemade croutons, focaccia croutons and Parmesan. 
seafood lovers rave about the main lobster salad flavored with pineapple, cilantro, and van vanilla dressing. And the roasted branzino, I forgot about that, the sea bass, there's a fish course. The roasted branzino paired with grilled vegetables and lemon confit. Blending peanut butter ganache, Valrona chocolate mousse, and salted caramel gelato, our signature dessert, the world is the ultimate sweet ending. They don't even mention the, um, the filet mignon, but you all can see this is what we sat down to. Each dish is paired with a sommelier selected glass of premium red or white wine. All right, so I'm gonna click on see the menu. We're gonna take a look at the menu. Let me see how y'all are doing. Is everybody doing okay over here? Nobody's passed out yet. Let's see how everybody's doing. We got Leanne in the house. She says that's a lot, but I bet it's amazing. It is a lot, y'all. This is probably one of those where you're going to take your time to eat seven courses. So allow yourself three hours. I didn't finish everything. I absolutely tasted everything, but you could save your calories for this meal. But yes, it was excellent. Hello, Richie. And hello, the original Pharaoh. Thank you so much for being here. Stella says, sorry, I'm late. You're never late, sweetheart. Wow. Thanks for sharing. I love the class on the chef's table. Absolutely. If you all want the premium experience, this is the place for you. I absolutely loved it. Uh, Lisa says, popping in to say hi, running mom around on errands. Lord knows I know. <laughs> Christina says, we're making her hungry. I know y'all. We are doing this chef's table dining documentary as a separate stream for that reason. All right, let us continue. Hello, Felix. Thank you so much for being here. All right, let's go to the menu. I need to share this tab instead. All right, so you all are going to see, if you can see this card here, one of the special touches that I loved, we'll go through all of these and you will see in my pictures. <sighs> mm, it was so nice, y'all. I'm sorry, I just, I can't get over it. One of the things that I love about the Royal Caribbean app, I'm sure a lot of them do the same thing. You have your own little mini calendar in the app. And on one side, it has all of the ship's activities for the day. And as you pick things that you want to do, whether they're free or paid, you can move them over to your calendar. So you have a view of, oh, I want to do this class and I want to do this and then I want to do this. And just like your calendar at home, it gives you notifications that says you have a dinner reservation um, on your mobile device and the Wi-Fi for the app is included. It's free. So it lets you know 30 minutes before, you know, dinner reservation, go to deck so-and-so. I think it was deck. I don't remember. But um, we met in the library and then upstairs at the top of the library, there was a private dining area. So we arrived and when we arrived, the sommelier greeted us with the um, aperitif, which is the starter cocktail. And then also when we sat down, everybody had a printed personalized menu with your name on it. You had me at hello. Who do we have here? We had the intentional, oh, international quiet storm says popping in to say hello. I'm buried in year end work. Send me a snack. Absolutely. Coming right up. Let me know what you would like. I will make it for you. I haven't done Maggie mail in a while. All right. So let's take a look at the menu all at once and then we'll go look at my pictures. So this is the menu that's on your table. So the first course, scallop carpaccio. So this is going to be yuzu vinaigrette. And I don't know, yuzu is some type of foreign fruit or vegetable, but it was basically the dressing, the little yellow dressing, you will see it, with crispy quinoa. Quinoa is like a grain alternative, and I think they kind of saute them to give it a little bit of crunch on the scallops. Sliced so thin, you would not believe it. Hello, Dr. Irena. Thank you so much for being here. That was course one, and it was paired with Pinot Grigio from Italy. All right, so that was our first course. So they set the table, we enjoyed, they cleared the table. Then we mo moved on to course number two, which was the soup course, smoked tomato soup with garlic focaccia croutons. If you like a savory garlic bread, yes. Um, and then this was served with a Chardonnay um, from Napa Valley, uh, California. I'm not a real wine snob, y'all, so I just went with what the, the sommelier recommended, but you all know more about this stuff than me. I'm here for the snacks. 
Then our third course, after the soup was cleared, was the main lobster salad. And you will see it was a lobster tail sliced on a bias, which is on the angle. And it had hearts of palm, which is a vegetable, kind of like um, a little crunchy vegetable, almost like a watercress or something like that. And then it had pineapple in like a little melon ball that they scooped out. So it looked like a little ball of pineapple with cilantro and vanilla dressing for the lobster salad. That was course three. That was the salad course, okay? So, so far, we've had the appetizer, the scallops, the soup course, and the salad course. Hello, Jay God. Thank you so much for being here. And Rude Boy, thank you so much for being here. That was paired with the Sauvignon Blanc from New Zealand, all right? And so, of course, during the the dinner service, they're explaining to us about the, the wineries and the origin of the grapes and all of that stuff. It was incredible. I loved it. So then after we had the salad and the soup and the um, scallops, our fourth course was the roasted branzino, which is sea bass. So for our pescatarians, branzino is fish. So this was a, gr a roasted fish on top of zucchini with peppers, a lemon confit, and pesto sauce. I was starting to hit the wall at this point but you just push through y'all. I couldn't finish all of it, but it was so incredible. And then the fish course was paired with a Chardonnay from France or from France, all right? So that was the fish course, uh-oh. And then the fifth course, we're not done yet. The fifth course was a filet mignon. When I tell y'all the flavor in the steak, the tenderness of the steak, it was served over truffle potato puree with grilled vegetables, asparagus, and Bordes, Bordelais sauce. You all will see the presentation. I don't know if I got a video of this, but just the steak alone. They had these plates. I don't know how to explain them. They had plates, and the plate had like a little groove. Get into the groove. And then when they would pour the sauce, it would kind of pool around the food in like a little divot on the side. So when you cut your steak and you drag it to you, you get a little bit of that sauce. I'm sorry, y'all. That was not elegant. I have a visceral reaction to food. It's a problem, I know. Ah, what is international? Um, oh, let me go back. Christina says, anything with scallops in there? Yes, my dear. That was the first one. I'll show you again. Tara says, how many attended the chef's table? I think the capacity was only 18. My pictures are coming up, so you all will see. Uh, we'll count at the table, but you may only have slots for at max 20 people. So if this is what you want, you need to reserve it in advance. And I will say this, you all, I think the cruise can be very affordable. Even if you wanna do like all these extra things like I did, when you all bless me, I would take the super chats and I would go ahead and book a specialty dinner for the cruise to come. So by the time I got to the cruise, like everything was paid for. So, um, you know, especially because we're going to do these annually, we're already planning no November 2024. Um, you can absolutely do this if you want to. Um, International Quiet Storm says, who about some... We are not talking about gluten-free dairy-free, sugar-free pizza rolls at the chef's table. Quiet storm. Not tonight. Not tonight. We're enjoying all the good stuff. How about some pizza rolls? Hello, Jurgen from Germany. Killis says, man, oh man, yes. Let's get back to my happy place. Okay, so the filet mignon, shout out to Killis and her uh, steak and whiskey. Um, the filet was served with the red wine. Uh, we had a Merlot from Napa, Napa Valley paired with the filet. And of course, so you're getting at least five glasses of wine, one with each course, plus the starter cocktail, plus dessert came with a cocktail. Y'all are going to see all of that. The final dessert and the reason why Tara is here, the pastry chef had an inspiration for a dessert that she called the world. It was peanut butter ganache and chocolate mousse and salted caramel gelato. But when you all see the presentation, it was in a ball that looked like magic shell. And then they poured the hot caramel sauce on it and it just dissolved. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. It was amazing. Okay, 
So hopefully everybody's doing all right. Hello, Nelson. Thank you so much for being here. So now we are gonna move on to my pictures and videos. So you all can see we are, uh, I think I started taking pictures when we uh, were taken upstairs. So we got our notification, we met at the library and then they took us to the private dining room. Hello, Glow in the Grow. Killis is here for the mousse. Oh, Christina, you haven't even seen it yet. The salted caramel gelato, just wait. All right, so let me pull up the pictures I have for you all. I put everything in an album. So let me get that together for y'all. I'm, I'm surprised y'all ain't tired yet. This is a lot, but I'm having so much fun sharing the details with you all. And I'm glad you all like it too. All right. So I put together an album yesterday called Cruise Day 2. Y'all already saw all of this room service, the behind the scenes tour, Maggie on the bridge. the engineering room, the brunch I had, oh God. Giovanni's Italian, that was lunch, y'all. Oh my God, it's so much, that's why I'm fasting. Okay, now we are ready. So I'll just show you all where we left off yesterday. Don't judge me, I went back for a snack. I just wanted some coffee, but they had these free pastries next to the coffee. So for research purposes, I did get, I have to be honest with y'all, a little piece of chocolate cake and I don't know what that is uh, with the coffee. So I just sat down to have a little uh, snack. I think that's like an oatmeal cookie, hashtag research. So yes, uh, all of this is included. So 24 hours, you can get what you want. Okay, so now we have been led up to the top of the library at the chef's table. So everybody's kind of coming in. You can see the sommelier there. So we came up those, those steps and you see he's handing us a cocktail. So they already had these prepared. Let me see what he said it was. Ooh, thank you so much. What do we have here? You're welcome, I'm gonna explain you everything. Yeah. Okay, he said, I'm gonna explain you everything. So this is Nikolai. Nikolai is from Romania. I'm not sure, but you all can see. So we're in the library. So we're up on the second floor. There's the rest of the cruise ship. And this is a beautiful piece of stemware. Ladies, remember, always hold it at the stem. Okay. I'm going to give you your unsolicited etiquette tip here. When you have stemware that is long and slim, it is for the drinks that have bubbles, your champagne, this aperitif, maybe even eh, it's too small for a white wine, but it keeps the um, bubbles from escaping too much. If you were to put it in a glass like this, and I'm drinking sparkling water, but when you have the big bowl, that's for your red wine glasses because the air um, kind of aerates and gives you you know, that red wine experience. But the slim glasses, you don't wanna hold it like this because they're served chilled and the heat from your hand is going to warm up the drink. Plus you get your fingerprints on the glass. Yes, shout out to the Maggie merch. So you wanna make sure with your stemware, hold it at the stem it's always more elegant and that's the proper etiquette okay killis says so far you think the chef's table was 250 dollars okay i'd love to know what you all think wait till you see it i need to see how much it was did i even pay for it i don't know uh nice romania your countryman ah killis has got uh eastern europe on her side wonderful Okay, so they're handing us our aperitifs. You can see here, it's like a sparkling drink. There's a little bit of lemon in here and some mint. So this was very refreshing. It was cold, it was sweet, had a little bit of brightness to it. And this is custom, kind of like a welcome cocktail when you go to like someone's home for a dinner party. Ladies, that time of year, if you go to like uh, the boss's house or whatnot for dinner, we talk about this in etiquette school, oftentimes they will offer you a welcome cocktail. The the purpose of the welcome cocktail, of course, is to refresh you, but also it kind of stimulates the appetite, you know, just kind of like gets your body ready to receive food. Jurgen is giving the thumbs up. Okay, let's keep going. So I have my aperitif. It was excellent. All right, so you can see here we are in the library, which is just kind of like a, a quiet area to get away. You all can even see here through the glass, the Royal Caribbean anchor. That's the water that's the aqua show behind us so there's lots of action going on back there but never to worry there's lots of quiet places if you just want to get away so this is an example 
When we arrived, the sommelier had these little menus for all of us with our name on it and the glasses. So he's handing those out. All right, so Maggie gets her glass and I'm taking a sip. <laughs> yeah, it was very bright. Um, I loved it. I absolutely loved it, but it was quite zippy. All right, so you all can see here, beautiful presentation. So let me see if I can get a still picture. All right, so we're coming in, everybody's dressed nicely. Let me see if I can count for you all. 16. So this dinner service only included 16. So you can see, um, I think this is one of the hosts who's welcoming us. We've all walked in and the napkin placement is folded up like a little tower. It is beautiful. In front of us, we all have five glasses plus a water glass. And then we're bringing to the table our uh, welcome cocktail. So not to, you know, say anything but ladies make sure you hold it by the stem because you're warming up your drink and it's if it's cold if it's served cold you need to enjoy it cold if it's served room temperature you should enjoy it room temperature all right so let me take a look see how everybody's doing Okay, we're doing well. So someone asked about the capacity. This dining experience is 16 people. So you can see why if you want to do the chef's table, um, you'll want to reserve that in advance. All right, let us continue. I thought the table presentation was beautiful. So before I sat down, I just came to the edge of the table and I just wanted to get a view of, <sighs> somebody do the math, five pieces of stemware plus a, water glass plus a cocktail times 16 people, seven times 16. So nice little candles on the table. And then this is the salt and pepper shaker. But just look at the presentation, ladies. I love hosting. If you don't like hosting, I get it. But I appreciate the precision here. And when you are doing dinner parties, there's a lot of work that goes into the spacing of the glassware and the plates and even like measuring like a thumb width from the edge of the table and the cutlery. I mean, it is, I could nerd out on this stuff. We're going to get to the food, but because I do cook and I love serving others, I really appreciate when someone takes the time to do a proper dinner service. <laughs> the condemned is here. He says seven times 16 people. There were 112 pieces of stemware on the table. My goodness, y'all, you can just imagine how beautiful that is with the crystal and the lighting. So yes, this is not the place that um, you want to bring the kids, nor is this the place if you just want to hurry up and eat. And if you don't appreciate a glass of wine, I probably wouldn't recommend this either because it was really about the pairing of the food with the wine. And when you pay for this specialty dining, uh, it includes the wine. So this is why I don't really buy or drink wine outside. If I had a meal and it came with it, that's what I did. Yes, y'all are saying 112. Ah, oh, Achilles. And you all will notice the staff and the service. One of the things I noticed, ladies, and I'm going to try and do this. So... We were either seated across from our dining companion or some families or couples sat together, but I noticed the staff, I pay attention to these things. The ladies were always served first, so they may skip over the gentlemen to present the meal to the ladies first, as well as um, when they were taking the order. We didn't order anything because the menu was planned, but when they were asking you how you liked your steak, ladies were asked first how would you like your steak prepared they would uh, take all of that and then they would circle back around and uh, serve the men so you know i'm not going to get into my relationship rant but y'all we are not equal we are equally valued but we are not equal so you know those are little touches that i do appreciate and i notice that so just a little touch especially if you're into formal dining the condemned says this looks fancy was there any Sanguinaccio dolce. I don't know what that is, but no, there was a very exquisite dessert. It was a salted caramel chocolate globe. All right, let's continue. Yes, it was very fancy. This could be my wallpaper. So we're getting seated. We have our welcome cocktail and we're all sitting down. Um, everybody's getting comfortable. And I'm going to give you all a little unsolicited etiquette. 
<laughs> Remember, when dining with others, it's never about the food. You don't touch anything. You don't, you know, start eating anything. There wasn't a bread basket on the table yet, but you wait to be served and you wait for everyone to be served and you enjoy the course together. Applesauce, Apple user says, was it a white party dinner? No, it was a formal dinner on uh, Royal Caribbean. All right, so I just love, I mean, the napkins too. It was just beautiful. All right, everybody's doing good. Let us continue. What are we doing here? Oh, I just, I was getting fancy, y'all. Just taking a view with my camera. Thank you so much. Okay, so we're getting settled and getting ready to start. Okay, so sitting down, I don't know if you all can see here. So there's my napkin and then notice how we had our menu in a little pocket and it has my name, Margaret Brown. Y'all know my name is Margaret. Maggie is my childhood nickname. Hello, Yate. So everybody had a personalized menu at their place setting. So it was really, really nice. So I have my water glass, ladies. The water glass is always the biggest glass on the table. The reason why is because you usually drink more of it. So the biggest glass on the table, whether it has a stem or not, is always the water glass and it's on the right. Then we have our five Five glasses of wine here for each of the five our five empty glasses for the wine that will be served okay so keep that in mind and I just loved oh my gosh the placement look at even the cutlery y'all we have the charger on the table the napkin how it's folded your personalized menu we, we work our way from the outside in so our cutlery here on the outside is for our starter course and then if you have a big basin spoon like this you know you're gonna have a soup course each utensil has a purpose. So this tells you that there's gonna be a soup course and then you have your main dish cutlery here. And then you can kind of hardly see it, but at the top here is your dessert cutlery. So when we sat down, let me see if I can go and see. When we sat down, I think I took an aerial view. Um, I'll come back to it in a second. Whenever you sit down at a table, ladies, whether it's a banquet or someone's party, take a moment to read the room, we talk about this in finishing school, but look at the cutlery. The cutlery is there and it has a purpose and you work your way from the outside in. And the reason why the dessert cutlery is at the top, they're going to clear the fork and knife as you complete each course. And then when you get down to the dessert, they're gonna move them down from the top down, okay? So that's why they're up there. So don't just start grabbing stuff. Um, Nancy, I know you can't see on TikTok. I'm on YouTube. I'm sharing my screen. I'm sorry for those of y'all on TikTok and Instagram, but you can find me Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter, Maggie the Substitute Teacher. I can't share with y'all on um, on TikTok. All right, the condemned says sandwich, sang, sanguin, sanguinaccio dolce is an Italian pudding made from creamy and sweetened with ingredients. I'll pass. The condemned says in Naples, it's prepared for carnival. I'm glad you want to try it. And when you do, let me know. All right, let us continue. All right, so I wanted to show you all the menu so you can see here, and I brought this home with me. Of course, this is a, uh, a souvenir. So this is the same menu that you all saw online. It's in this beautiful little folder. It says chef's table and it has your name and it has the sale date. So beautiful dinner. This could be an anniversary or just a really nice experience. Hello, Doomsday. But the little personal touch, I just think it means so much. Y'all can let me know if you think it's, you know, just a gift but I loved it. Okay, so we have our aperitif and then Nikolai is explaining something to us. Let me see what he's talking about. Come on and top up with Chandon. Chandon is the small brother of Moen. Yeah? Mm. And lemon and top up with Chandon. Chandon. All right, so he's explaining to us what is in the um, the welcome cocktail. If you all remember when we arrived, he gave us all a welcome cocktail and I asked him, I said, what is this? He said, I'm going to explain everything. So that's how it works. So lesson for me, sit down and wait, Maggie. So once we were seated and he welcomed us, he stood at the end of the table and he told us, I think it had lemon. It had some, I, I, I could taste the citrus and then topped off with Chandon which he said is like a cousin to Moe. So it's like a, a French champagne. All right, so very good. Sounds delish. Y'all are, okay. I'm glad that you like your dolce. Absolutely. We like what we like. Okay. So enjoying the welcome cocktail. All right. Now you can see the waiter is coming through. We already know, ladies, y'all know. Uh-oh. 
Y'all know in the finishing school, <laughs> I was there with my camera, but I mean, I had my phone in my lap. You all know only things at the table that are for dining. So I have my napkin in my lap and my phone underneath my napkin. If I took a picture of the food, then I put it back down. But Let's enjoy. So Nikolai is coming around the table and refilling and filling everybody's water glass. So you can see here he has, I don't know what it is, panna, but we had a beautiful, I think it was an Italian bottled water. Can y'all see the light fixture? Does anybody notice what's in the light fixture? I just, I love the details in these things, but he's coming around the table as we get started and giving everybody water. All right, so he's coming and making his way around. And uh, I did take my napkin. I probably should have waited. Okay, so just giving you all your uh, etiquette tip. When you sit down for a dinner, ladies, you wanna take the napkin from the plate and place it in your lap. Those of you in the finishing school know more about the napkin etiquette. We've talked about that, but that is the first thing that you wanna do, okay? No napkins here. We don't shake it out like a sheet. You take it quietly and underneath the table, you unfold it and gently place it in your lap. If you don't, uh, as the wait staff comes by, they will do it for you. So ladies and gentlemen, they will take the napkin and gently unroll it and just kind of drape it over your legs. Okay, I love that service, but just letting you all know. Gillis says the special details makes everything better. Y'all like that little personalized menu? Absolutely. Okay, so I've got my napkin. So I took an aerial view. So after I took my napkin down, this was the place setting times 16. And I thought it was exceptional. So you all can see here, we have our five wine glasses for each course, our water glass on the right. I did set my little welcome cocktail down here with the lemon and mint. I'm not sure if that's correct. I'll have to, you know what? I'm going to send this to my etiquette teacher. I'm going to ask her if I did that right. All right. So you all can see the bread plate is on the left. And let me just give you all another tip that I've learned. The acronym BMW, those of you all that are car people, you will remember it. So in order, BMW, your bread plate is always the one on the left. And this little dull knife is your bread knife. So if you need to butter your bread, you're going to take some butter from the dish, put it on your personal plate, and then you butter your bread from your little piece of butter. We already talked about the cutlery. Notice we have three on this side three on this side. I love the um, design. And then you see the fork and knife up here, which are going to be dragged down when we're ready for the final course. BMW, your bread on the left, your meal in the center, and your water on the right. So if you're ever at a banquet table or something where you have a lot of people there, your bread, meal, water. BMW. How's everybody doing? Let's check. Killa says, the lighting looked like utensils. Yes, y'all saw the light fixtures. They were forks and knives. It wasn't completely clear with the brightness. Okay, gotcha. Let us continue. Hopefully y'all are loving this. I am loving sharing it with you. All right, so what's happening now? I think I'm just panning the table, just looking at everything, taking it all in. Okay, so again, this is gonna be a very slow paced meal, but we got to meet our traveling companions, got to make conversation for the introverts amongst us. This could be a great experience because you have something in common, the meal. So if you don't like making small talk, a dinner party could be a great way to kind of get yourself a little bit more comfortable. Hello, Olympian, Pocahontas, thank you so much for being here and MC Mill. All right, so there's Maggie. Uh, you can see the sommelier is at the top and he is getting ready to go over. I think he's taking a picture for us of the table. Clearly, I'm not paying attention. And then these are the wines. He's going to explain them to us as we go. All right, so now he's coming through and he's picking up the chargers. So the chargers are like the little white trays. Well, they're actually quite big. This is what you would put a plate on. You don't actually serve on the chargers. This is for the place setting. So he's collecting them. And then I don't know if you all can see. Yes, this is cutlery, knives, forks, and spoons. All right, so he's serving everyone. I'm just going to go through. I took lots of pictures, y'all, because I never know what's going to turn out. 
All right, so you can see here he took her napkin and he's taking the charger. So you notice he's unfolding it, gently putting it on her lap and taking the charger. All right, so we are ready for the bread. This was a Parker House roll. I can't remember what he said was on it, but y'all, when I tell you this beauty was brought to everyone or to every two people. So this is like pull apart bread. And of course the chef came out and told us about this Parker roll with like yeast something and brushed with egg wash and, and uh, sprinkled with um, like parsley and then melted butter drizzled. Y'all, the condemned says, I have yet to take classes on dining etiquette and utensil classification. Hmm, maybe Maggie should come up with something. It makes eating look like work. Just let me eat. Well, we talked about that. So for those of you all who, if this seems like a lot and it don't take all that, then I would not recommend the chef's table. They have lots of grab and go options and lots of simple options. But if you are a true foodie and you want the best of the best, I will meet you there. Jurgen says it looks good. Thank you. All right, let's continue. On to the bread. Looks exquisite. And yes, it was hot and piping fresh. So I took lots of pictures. And what is happening here? For all of you tonight, become part of Cedebel with us, okay? Okay, so the chef has now come out. So they brought the bread. We have our welcome cocktail. We have the bread. Notice how nobody is touching the bread. This is correct. So don't be that person. As soon as they put something down, you reach for it and help yourselves. You are not raised by wolves, okay? You will be okay. Do not do that. You never know, ladies, if there's going to be a toast, if there's going to be a prayer, if there's going to be a chef coming out and introducing himself. So wait, always follow the host's lead. Lucy and I talk about this in our host uh, and guest class, but if they put the food in front of you, wait until you're told you may begin. So you can see that the chef is going to come out and he's explaining to us how he prepared the rolls and what's special about it. Jurgen says it looks good. All right, so let us continue. And once he goes back, then he lets us know we can begin. So um, the first course is coming out and the chef is pouring, I can't remember, what was the first one? Let me go over to my other tab. The Pinot, Pinot Grigio for the first course. So we have our water glass and he's starting on the right with the wine and pouring it for everyone. And this is a proper pour, okay? You're gonna pour your wine into the widest part of the bowl. You don't pour your wine all the way up to the top. And I, I tasted everything, but I didn't finish everything. So you can see here, there's Nikolai. He's explaining to us about the wine. He's poured everybody a glass. And then he comes up to the front. Again, nobody is touching their wine glass yet. So he's explaining to us what the wine is, where it's made, the temperature, the soil, all of that stuff. And then he's telling us why he selected this wine, because it pairs really well with whatever course. So then he's going to tell us to swirl, to sniff, and then to sip. Okay. So again, if this seems like too much work for you, don't do it. Everybody all right? All right, let us continue. All right, so Nikolai is giving us his instruction. So I'm following along. I'm doing the swirl to activate whatever is supposed to happen and get the things moving. And then I smelled it. And then I took a nice little sip. And I enjoyed. Hmm. Maggie's not really a wine connoisseur, but I'm here for the experience. Now look at this beauty. Look at these rolls. Look at this hot butter bread. So I'm ready to uh, dig in, but of course I'm waiting so I don't embarrass you all. So you pull apart a little piece and you can see the melted butter has gone all the way down and I'm taking a bite of the bread. <laughs> oh yeah, it was that good y'all. And y'all know I'm gluten free, but not on this day. I'm eating everything. Everybody doing good? Let me check the chat. Okay, let us continue. So I'm enjoying the bread. I probably should have torn off a small piece. All right, shout out to uh, Christina. You wanted the scallops. Now we are ready for course number one. Let me go over to the menu. Scallop carpaccio, yuzu vinaigrette, 
crispy quinoa. All right, so let me see. I think I have a better picture. I took several pictures. So what he explained to us for this course, it looked incredible. So he got the scallops and froze them. So fresh scallops and then froze the scallops and then used a mandolin to slice them as thin as possible and then plated the thinly sliced scallops and then made that fresh vinaigrette and put a dollop of vinaigrette on each um on each piece of scallop and then you have your like what did he call them not mixed greens y'all know the type of greens that grow in the greenhouse or whatever in the water there's a name for them i forget and then these little pebbles these little pieces on here are the crispy quinoa so it's not just crunchy hello i'm sorry it's not just a uh, soggy hello chris um i took several pictures but i wanted you all to see up close the scallops. They were sliced so thin, you you would think it was see-through. It was just the presentation was incredible. So we now were told to begin. So I took a fork and you see I'm list, lifting up one little piece of scallop. <laughs> so again, for those of y'all who say this is too much, it takes too long or whatever, and then I'm tasting the scallop. Excellent. Absolutely excellent. Yeah, hydro, hydro plants, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, hydro greens or something like that. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Christina says, interesting, yes. And it was it was wonderful. So if you like shellfish, you know, shellfish uh, tastes like the ocean, right? It's kind of cool. It's kind of uh, cold. So I asked, were the scallops raw? So they weren't raw. If you're familiar with ceviche, you know how they take raw fish and raw shrimp and they like cure it in... Um, like lemon or lime juice that kind of, you know, does something to it so it's not raw. So it was a very fresh scallop because once they sliced it because they needed to be frozen to slice and then let them come to temperature. And we got Rita in the house. My first time seeing you here. Hello, my dear. What does the condemn say? Well, if it's a challenge that involves getting to eat delicious food with some class, I'm up for it. I always want to get more cultured. Yes, I'm telling y'all. We are doing this again next year and every year, God willing. Lauren has already picked the next Maggie Meetup cruise. So if you want the link, I'll send it to you, but I may wait until after the holidays to announce it. We'll see. Um, but I'm going again next November. So if y'all want to come with, <laughs> come with. Um, Christina says, OMG. Jurgen is uh, licking his chops. Killis says, yum, that looks insane. It was so good, y'all. And for this, I ate everything. Just very thin sliced scallops. I ate everything. Oh, interesting. What does Tara say? This looks amazing. Christi uh, Tara says, I love experiencing food through your eyes. I'm glad y'all say that because I'm happy to do these things by myself. I know not everybody, some some people think it don't take all that and I respect that, okay? But for those of us who like a real culinary experience, especially because I get to be served, oh, I love it. Tracy says, hello. Christina says, yes, exactly. Okay, so let us continue. So we've had bread and we have had scallops. So Maggie is enjoying one little bite at a time. Hello. Now we're up to course number two, which is the roasted tomato soup. Okay, so they have cleared the plates. Now we're ready for the, I'm sorry, smoked tomato soup, garlic focaccia croutons, parmesan, and this is paired with a chardonnay. All right, so you can see here, they, play, they put this in front of us and I'm like, interesting. I've never had a soup presentation like this. I love it. It's so fancy. So let me see if he explains. She's in, she just got into medical school. Okay, so they're talking about medical school and whatnot. So you can see the croutons are here, a few microgreens. I think that's what they call them. This looks like peeled tomato. You all can see how they kind of peel the skin back on the tomato. And this, I think, is either creme fraiche or some type of sour cream or something, and then freshly shaved Parmesan. So everybody got a bowl with this and then they came around with the puree. So they made the tomato soup into a puree and then they poured it on top of your bowl. So we were served the bowl with the accoutrement and then the roasted tomato soup. When 
I tell you. Y'all. This is not your tomato. This, shout out to Campbell's. This is not your Campbell's tomato soup and grilled cheese. But the chef came out and he explained how they get these tomatoes from, I don't know, it might, might have been the San Marzan or the, the uh, Italian, whatever tomatoes. And then they slow roast them to get that smoke flavor infused. And then they cook them down and then they puree them with the garlic and everything else. And then they blend it. I love this presentation because you're, you're actually able to focus on just the broth or the puree and then the little crunchy bits and all that other stuff. You put that in the bowl and then pour the puree over top. Oh, take me now. Okay, so that was the soup course. It was excellent. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I took several pictures, y'all, but it was just excellent. So I'm trying to do my proper etiquette technique and scoop away from me. I should have scraped on the side, but that's the proper etiquette technique. You go away from you. I really wanted to like stir everything up and get it all nice and <laughs> homogenous, but uh, it was incredible. It was incredible. Oh yeah, you can tell when something's been cooking a long time. Okay, course number three. So we've done our scallops and we've done our soup course. Now this is the salad course. So for anyone who missed it, this is the main lobster salad with hearts of palm, pineapple, cilantro, and vanilla dressing. So let's take a look. All right, so now they're giving us our plate. And you can see this is a lobster tail and it's been cut. Notice the dressing is in this <laughs> very beautiful um, dollops. This is the vinaigrette dressing for the salad. You have your microgreens. These little balls are balls of pineapple scooped out. So if you like like a sweet mango kind of flavor with the seafood, and then the hearts of palm is kind of like watercress. It's a vegetable, kind of a crunchy vegetable. So I'm taking lots of pictures, just beautiful presentation. Hopefully you all can see. And so the chef came out, he explained to us the, pre the preparation about the lobster, uh, everything, um, told us what makes the yuzu vinaigrette special, just all of the detail while we sat there and the food was looking at us. And then he said, enjoy. And then once they tell you to enjoy, then pick up your cutlery, get a little bit of everything uh, and take a bite and then pair it with your glass. Okay. I'm just trying to see if I, I have anything um, to share with you all. All right. So let me see how y'all are doing in the chat. Everybody's doing well. We're ready for the fish course. Jurgen is... Jurgen always brings his plate. I love it. Okay, so that was three. We've had the scallops. We've had the soup. We've had the lobster. Now we're ready for course number four, which is the fish. All right, so remember the fish course is roasted branzino, which is sea bass, over grilled zucchini, peppers, lemon confit, and pesto. So let's take a look at the fish course. <sighs> My God, y'all! It just keeps coming. Thank you so much. All right, so they're serving us. So you can see here. So this is the presentation of the fish: a nice crispy skin, a beautiful fillet, a sea bass. You can see the roasted vegetables. You can see the pesto down at the bottom. So they have the pesto sauce. Also, they have the peeled skin, cherry tomatoes. You have your asparagus. You have your other vegetables underneath here, and then the beautiful piece of fish laid on top and i don't know what this is is that citrus but yes it was incredible it was absolutely incredible so of course the chef comes out again explains to us the sea bass how they marinate it what they do so on and so forth i should have used my knife here but um beautiful flaky fish i enjoyed everything cooked to perfection so maggie's gonna try the fish Oh yeah, it was good. It was excelente, excelente. Everybody doing well? All right, so then we enjoyed our fish course and then finally it's time for the red wine because the final course is coming out, the filet mignon. So course number five is the grilled filet mignon. 
over truffled potato puree with asparagus and bordelaise sauce. So I love the presentation here. Remember what I said about the plate? You can see that it's got this rim here. So when they served it to us, um, it didn't have anything in here. And then they came around and they poured the sauce in that little moat. So as you cut into your steak, you could get a little bit of the sauce. It was incredible. So you can see here, you have your truffle potatoes. Those of y'all that like truffle fries, your asparagus, your carrot, just beautiful excellent filet mignon just i have no words like i said it was probably the best dining experience of my life so i did enjoy this and they asked us how you want your filet cooked and they will always tell you the chef's recommendation he recommends medium or medium rare okay let me check and see how y'all are doing we have now had five courses oh christina says you'd eat that with chicken oh the red merlot okay yes you could have that with chicken um, Jurgen is hungry now. Our meditarian is ready to eat. Okay, so we've had our five courses. Now we're ready for dessert. Tara, pay attention. All right, so if you thought we were done with the drinking, shout out to Kalis, we're still drinking. Now, I did take a sip of everything uh, per the sommelier's recommendation. Did I drink the whole glass? No, I continued to drink the water. I did drink my welcome cocktail, but that was enough for me. And of course, if you wanted more, they would absolutely, if you if there was a wine that you really love, they would continue to pour for you. So you take as much time as you need, drink as much as you want. I'm just a lightweight, so I, I don't drink like that. Okay, Tara says she's here. Christina says the steak looks amazing, but you don't eat red meat. I understand. Okay, so they have cleared all five courses. Now we're going to dessert. So the bartender comes out and he is going to make a cocktail. It is a martini. Let me go over to the menu. So for our dessert, we had a pairing with the dessert. So seven drinks, y'all. The welcome cocktail, the dessert mar uh, martini, and five glasses of wine. So he is, um, let me see. I think I'll just show what he's doing. And then if I need to add anything, let me make sure y'all can see. North Philly. North Philly. Philippines, North Philippines. North Philippines. North Philippines. <laughs> oh, he was telling us he was from North Philly, the Philippines. All right, so you all can see here, he's got a bucket of ice. He has, I think this is rum or something, and then like a coconut or caramel syrup. He just had all of his ingredients there, and he actually made the martini in front of us, you know, with the shaker and the whole thing. And so all of us got... Um, I guess this is a dirty martini. I don't know if that's a coffee bean. I think it did have an espresso in it, but this was the seventh drink to go with dessert. It was exquisite. <laughs> okay. Oh my. So now dessert is coming out. So we've all been served. You can see there's still wine on the table. So we didn't drink everything. So now the chef is coming out with dessert. And so again, ladies, don't touch anything. So they're going to put the dessert in front of you. Hello, D-Ray. And then the pastry chef is going to come explain what it is. So I have my dirty martini and I have this gold dusted ball. Is that gold dust? Yeah, this one you find it only in Wonderland. And oh the my chef table, of course. But here we don't have Wonderland. So <laughs> we have privilege to have this wonderful Is dessert. that gold dust? Okay, so this is Nikolai. He's telling us that this dish is only available in one place on the ship, which is the chef's table. So they're gonna explain at the bottom, so you'll see my little dirty martini, but at the bottom we have, I think it's Rice crispy, like white chocolate Rice crispy, some fresh mint, raspberry, and then there's a surprise in here. Let's see what y'all are saying. <laughs> okay, this is funny. Jurgen says, wow, just you wait. Okay, so sitting there, letting it sit, and then the pastry chef comes out and she explains to us her idea. So you'll see that, but again, you all notice we had a host, we had a sommelier that selected the wine, we had a chef that came up with the menu, we had a bartender that did the martini and explained that to us, and then the pastry chef. So just the level of detail and the level of attention that you get at specialty dining, I love it. The big dinner service is probably better if you just want to eat and go. Tara says, I'm so excited. She says, oh my gosh. Okay, my dear, I thought of you. Nate says, hello. All right, let's get back to it. 
So now we have all been served our balls of wonder. And you notice the pastry chef, she's coming through and she has a pitcher of hot caramel sauce. And she tells everybody, get your phones ready. And I'm like, you must know me, right? Hello, Corey's. So she's got this pitcher of hot caramel sauce and she comes to us one by one. And let me show you what happens. Is this hot this caramel, caramel sauce? sauce? Salted, Salted hot caramel. Salted, Salted hot caramel. caramel. Oh my oh gosh, that looks amazing. <gasps> and there's ice cream inside. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it just crumbles. Amazing. It's so beautiful. And there's Rice Krispies at the bottom. That's the little things. Okay, yes, y'all know that's me trying not to cry. Um, I'm gonna let you watch it one more time. This was the dessert after seven courses and all of the attention. So this was a chocolate like magic shell ball with a scoop of chocolate, um, peanut butter ice cream and chocolate ganache with hot salted caramel poured on top. When it crumbled into each other, then it just kind of dissolved. So you had the hot from the caramel, the cold from the ice cream, the crispy from the Rice Krispies, and then the fruit, I was done. I was done. You had me at hello. Christina says, OMG. Killa says, I love those things. Maggie is over the moon. <laughs> y'all hear me? It's the little things, y'all. I absolutely love it. So this was the dessert at the end. Of course, look at me. Y'all know I'm so excited. I'm trying my martini, trying to pair it the way the sommelier said. It's a little much for me, but I'm going to zoom in here and just let y'all take a moment to take it all in. Before I put my spoon in it, I took a picture for you all. I may have to post this, but this was after. So it's got a pool of hot caramel sauce, cold ice cream, chocolate, and Rice Krispies. Oh, it was just goodness. I can't even, I can't even. <laughs> Me too. So you all can see I'm getting a little bit of ice cream, a little bit of caramel, a little bit of chocolate. I'm trying to get a little bit of Rice Krispies, maybe even a little bit of fruit for that perfect bite. That's how they make these things, y'all. So you put a little bit of everything on your utensil and it's meant to be consumed together. Oh yeah. <laughs> I want to cry. I do. I do. I do. It was so good. Oh, so now I think this is where the pastry chef, she's come out and she's asking us how we like the dessert and she's explaining to her, us the concept. She wanted to come up with something that would bring people together. The chocolate ball is the globe, the different flavors. Y'all know I don't know this stuff. Let's see what she says. Thank you for dining with us. I hope you enjoy all of our services, all of that we serve to you. Um, by the way, before you go home, you will be receiving an email for a survey. Okay, I didn't record that. I must have still been, excuse me, overwhelmed. But you can see we all had a great time. Of course, I didn't finish the dessert. I mean, it was just too much, but it was excellent. So this was the chef. This is the pastry chef. You saw Nikolai the sommelier. You saw our bartender and you saw our host. So um, it was exquisite. And then I asked her to take a picture of me and the two chefs, but she took a video. So y'all can see I'm standing up there trying to get a picture. Uh, I have some more, but yeah, this is what you all saw when I posted it. This is hot caramel sauce. Salted hot caramel. Salted hot caramel. Salted hot caramel. All right, y'all. So, okay. Ah, so hopefully you all enjoyed. 
<laughs> the condemned. Oh, Kula says that right there is a good shot. The lighting is perfect and you can see a lot of detail. Okay, as far as the dessert. So yes, I will make sure I will be posting this, you all, so you all can see everything. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this. I absolutely enjoyed um, going here for research, but yes. Excuse me, I will post this. You can see the table and the glassware, all of the beautiful detail around the dessert. <laughs> Jurgen is giving the thumbs up. Yeah, I'm telling you, y'all, when I say for me, one of the best or probably the best dining experience of my life, but I like this type of intricate service. So now, after seven cocktails or glasses of wine, five courses of food, and a dessert and the intimate service, how much do you all think this meal is worth? I don't even remember how much I paid, um, but I don't think I paid more than $100, but I'd love to know what you all think. How much is that worth? I would love to know. So, okay, um, while you all are coming in, I had so much fun. I wanted to do a dedicated stream just for this one because this was the most intricate dining experience. Um, I will continue since you all want more. Uh, well, Lucy and I will be back tonight as Wednesday. So I think at my, in about an hour and a half, Lucy and I will be back for the Maggie Lou Q&A, Ask Us Anything. Um, so we'll get back to our regularly scheduled program. And then tomorrow I will do um, day three for you all for the cruise. Yes, I think we're up to day three. Kila says you're changing your price to $425. Christina wants to know what I ate at Italian. Goodness. All right, I'll go really quickly for you. You went to bed uh, yesterday. Jurgen says $250. I think if I remember, I'm just going to scroll back up really fast you guys if i remember i think it was like a hundred dollars per person maybe more but they always have sales um so you know for me it's worth it to add on um okay so yes this is italian i'm just going to go through it quickly for those y'all that were here yesterday giovanni's um but yeah it's definitely worth it you're not going to get what you pay, you're not going to get a meal like that on land um, for that price. So um, you can eat the included food and it's very good, but by all means. All right. So sitting down for Italian yesterday. Um, started with, okay, there's the menu. So just appetizer, entree. There's the wine list. If you want wine, I passed on wine. So there's the, the waiter, Jake. He said Jake from State Farm. So they started us with olive oil, really good quality olive oil, balsamic vinaigrette, and some freshly grated Parmesan. Rosemary bread basket. So that was really tasty, very good quality. I felt like I was back in Italy. Absolutely. So that was the bread basket to start. I started with a little breadstick. It was yummy. I should have broken off a piece, but I did bite it. Um, and then I put it in the balsamic. So if you like that sweet, salty, savory, oh, so good. So I gave that a try. Then I put the bread in there to dip it and get a really nice piece of rosemary bread. Hello, Oskabi. Uh, calamari was my appetizer. This was probably the best calamari of my life. It had marinara and the garlic aioli. I put some lemon on there. Uh, I couldn't decide, so I got two appetizers. This is the caprese, so it's the fresh mozzarella burrata, peeled tomatoes, and then the pesto. It was exquisite and a little balsamic underneath. It was incredible. I'm glad I got both of them. The calamari, usually they give you the rings. This was like the little strips. They were fried, obviously, but they were so tender and juicy and big and flavorful. Um, so there was soup, but I didn't have soup. So I wanted to make sure I got, yes, the calamari. Trying everything. So you can see here, this is the, the calamari. Lovely. So there's Maggie with the caprese, excellent. 
So the fresh mozzarella, when you cut in, into it, there's a cream on the inside. So it's kind of like a wet cheese, but it's a re really good quality and it mixes well with the pesto and the balsamic and the fresh um, uh, volcanic tomatoes. <sighs> Couldn't decide. So I had the sea bass. I didn't know I was going to have it for dinner that night, but I got the sea bass. And then this is the, oh my gosh. Um, Carbonara. So this is pasta with bacon and a poached egg. In Italy, they serve it with the guanciano, I think it's called. It's like the wild boar. So it's like a really savory like piece of pork. And then when you cut, um, the fish was excellent. Y'all already know. The carbonara is cooked in egg. And when you cut into it, the yolk kind of becomes like the cream sauce. So it was so good. Just so good. I couldn't eat everything, y'all. I just... We talked a little bit about the food. They don't waste it, but it's just, it's so much food, y'all. It's just so much. I just, I was greedy and I wanted to try everything. I did try everything, but I didn't eat. I couldn't eat it all. I just couldn't. It was too much. But uh, if you like your runny yolk, that was the pasta. He said, I'll just bring it and put it in the middle of the table. You can try both. And I was like, oh my gosh, if you say so. And then for dessert, I had tiramisu. So the lady fingers and the espresso, this was lunch. This was the lunch before the chef's table. So two desserts, all right? So it was exquisite. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it was so good. All right, so hopefully that helped you, Christina. <laughs> Christina says, OMG. Christina says, yum, yum, yum. $100 upcharge, I believe so. I. Oh, Euro, um, Jurgen says 250 euros, which is, yeah, like $300. So yes. So for those of you all who are thinking about cruising with us, um, I think we're going to do something different next year where everything is included. Stay tuned for that. But for Royal Caribbean, let's say I'm making it up, but let's say the cruise itself is $500. There's all kind of food that is included in that cruise price and it's good food. But if you want to make it a premium experience, for a small cover charge, not as much as what you would pay on land, but it could be anywhere from $20 to $50 to $100. You can have dinner at the specialty restaurant and forgo your dinner at the regular dining restaurant. For me, it's absolutely worth it because we planned this so far in advance. I think we were talking about the cruise like in February. So all throughout the year, you just get your app and you're like, ooh, I want to do that. Just add it and you just pay it. And if you decide you change your mind, they'll refund it. But they do recommend if you want like a dining experience like that, as soon as it's open for you to book, go ahead and get it. And then if you change your mind, they'll refund you. We were supposed to do some stuff that didn't pan out. So they'll refund you the money, but at least you save your seat. So I think it was like $100 for the chef's table. And easily that's like a $300 meal um, on land. All right, so hopefully that answers everybody's questions. Christina wants to go out for Italian. So, all right, everyone, we're gonna go ahead and dismiss. I got about an hour and a half before I'm back with Lucy. Uh, if you're interested in the relationships content, we'll be streaming again. Q&A, ask us anything, uh, we'll be back. And then tomorrow, we'll continue the uh, cruise recaps. We're up to day three. All right. And it was a five day cruise. Hello, Amy. All right. So let's go ahead and dismiss. Thank you all so much on Instagram for being here. Uh, maybe I'll see you tonight with Lucy. Uh, go ahead and dismiss. Thank you, Instagram and TikTok. Thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for all the hearts and the love. Uh, maybe I'll see you tonight with Lucy, but I'm going to go ahead and dismiss TikTok. And then those of you all, everybody saying good night. Oh, Condemn says, was there a gym on board? Yes, sir. Um, I think you missed that yesterday because um, you have to, to get to this. I know there's a gym because I went to the spa and it was next to the gym. But yes, they have fitness classes and like, again, basic fitness classes and morning yoga, all that is included. If you want to do like the extra fancy stuff, then you can pay a nominal charge, but nothing that you pay for extra is going to be as much as it would be on land. But just because they can't take everyone, they have to charge a little bit. All right. Killer says, cheers. We'll see you in a, in a few. Yes. Uh, I think Capone said he definitely hit the gym every day. I didn't clearly. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and dismiss. Maybe I'll see y'all tonight or tomorrow. Thank you, everyone.